everyone and welcome. I'm Errol Barnett broadcasting to you from my home office here in Manhattan. It's a real pleasure to have you with us. A lot of big stories to get to uh, for you right now. And we begin with President Trump turning a Rose Garden address at the White House Tuesday into an apparent campaign speech. The president began his remarks by announcing an executive order and legislation targeting China over its treatment of Hong Kong. But then Mr. Trump launched into a series of attacks on Joe Biden over the former vice president's policies related to China, trade, uh, the economy, immigration, and law enforcement, among others. Joining me now to discuss all of that and more are Major Garrett and Natalie Brand. Major, of course, is our CBS News chief Washington correspondent, and Natalie is at the White House. Thanks uh, to you both for being with us. Major, let's begin with you. This presidential address felt like a bit more of a campaign speech, as they do with President Trump. But from what I was able yes. to see, the president's demeanor appeared to be slightly more subdued. What was your major takeaway from, from what happened Tuesday? You know, subdued, letting off some steam, but clearly trying to draw contrast with the presumptive Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. And the president doesn't have rally space to do this anymore. So he chose a Rose Garden event. And there are those who have been advising the Trump campaign who say, look, you've, the president's got to find more ways to more frequently draw campaign contrasts with Joe Biden. And doing events at the White House, being presidential, helps, but it doesn't get him the kind of traction among his supporters that taking really hard, aggressive shots at the ideological or policy differences or political differences between him and his administration and the Biden campaign and other like-minded Democrats has to happen, and it has to happen as frequently as possible. Now, the president wanted to have a campaign rally this weekend, this Saturday, in New Hampshire, but they had to cancel it. Yes, they were afraid of small crowds. They were also afraid of the weather. But be that as it may, whatever the combination of reasons, no rally. So the president has to find ways, and he's desperate to find ways, to draw these sharp contrasts. Now, the top of the remarks did deal with substantive issues. And in the vernacular of our times, don't sleep on China and this entire policy scrape going on between the Trump administration and the Chinese government. Hong Kong is in the middle of it. The Hong Kong Accountability Act was passed unanimously or nearly unanimously in Congress, and the executive order eliminating U.S. preferences for Hong Kong. It's a serious national security and foreign policy issue. And the president used that as a platform to show, from his perspective, how tough he's been on China. That's going to be a campaign issue. That's a legitimate point of either friction or conflict or at least discussion in the country. And a lot of Republicans are looking for something else besides the pandemic or police reform to talk about. And most of them, looking at their internal polls, just as the White House is, is falling back on China. China is someplace that many conservative Republicans view askance, skeptically, if not hostily. And China is bungling, intentionally or otherwise, of the early stages of the coronavirus, give all of that messaging exactly the kind of punch the president wants and Republicans want to have. So, yes, it was a campaign event done by a president in the, in the Rose Garden acting presidentially. But that, sig that sig signals to us a couple of things. The policy contrasts are real. It's important. Two, the president understands that he has got to get combative and draw contrasts with Joe Biden and as soon as possible. Why? Because whatever he says about him not believing polls showing him behind, actions like this afternoon, hastily called press conference, full of political attack lines, tells you the White House, the Trump re-election campaign, is nervous about what those polls say, knows they are roughly consistent with their own internal polls, and have to get back in this race. Yeah, never underestimate the power of the presidential podium, which typically allows incumbents to coast to re-election. What also allows that to take place is a good economy. History tells us when the economy is doing well, presidents can ride that to re-election. The president did tout some of his economic achievements. Uh, his rival, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden, released his economic plan late last week, a, a uh, what, $2 trillion climate plan earlier on Tuesday. Natalie. Are the president and his campaign, I'm wondering, growing concerned about campaigning on an economic message as planned, or do they still see that as a winnable message? 
Well, Errol, you could hear some of that in the president's comments just in the last hour in the Rose Garden because he took sharp aim at Biden as we've been talking about specifically uh, the climate plan that the presumptive Democratic nominee unveiled today, releasing two plans for a clean energy future and committing to 2035 as a carbon-free power sector with millions of, of jobs dedicated to this clean energy future. The president said today uh, that this is a hardcore crusade against American energy, accused Biden of being part of the radical left, invoking the name of prog progressive Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, and taking, again, sharp aim at his energy plans. Uh, we also heard the president criticize uh, Biden's economic plan last week, even accusing him him of, of plagiarizing some parts of it because Biden was speaking about ramping up manufacturing jobs and infrastructure uh, and dedicating trillions of dollars to new efforts uh, to, to promote new jobs along these lines. And we know that Biden is campaigning in some of these key Rust Belt states using Pennsylvania uh, and Scranton, his hometown, to, to talk about uh, his economic message. That, of course, being a key state uh, this election cycle. It was a key state last election cycle that the president carried. So we can see, based on where uh, these events are taking place, there is a fierce battle for not only these battleground states, but the constituencies uh, that both of these candidates will be vying for uh, and the presumptive Democratic nominee trying to cut into some of that support that carried President Trump. Trump in 2016, when you look at the types of, of voters uh, from uh, laboring work, labor uh, workers and manufacturing uh, workers and, and some of the, the key groups that will be so critical this time around. We're also hearing and watching President Trump continue to push um, his effort to reopen schools this fall. He was asked about that by our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge, in an exclusive interview Tuesday afternoon. I want you both to just listen to that exchange. The Los Angeles School District is the latest and one of the largest in the country to say they're not going back to school in the fall. Mistake. What do you tell parents and teachers who feel that it's unsafe to go back? I would tell parents and teachers that you should uh, find yourself a new person, whoever's in charge of that decision, because it's a terrible decision. Because children and parents are dying from that trauma, too. They're dying because they can't do what they're doing. Mothers can't go to work because all of a sudden they have to stay home and watch their child and fathers. Uh, what's happening. You know, there's a tremendous strain on that whole side of the equation. So it's a balancing, it's a balancing act. It is a balancing act, but that we have to open our schools. Well, I also say a decision like that is politics, because we're starting to do very well in the polls, because I'm for law and order, I'm for strong business, our jobs are coming back at a record level, like never, we've never seen anything like it, record level. We're heading up. It's turning out to be the V, just like I, I built it once before, the strongest economy ever. I'm doing it again. And they don't want that to happen because who's, they think who's the they? they is the Democrats. Major, why do you think President Trump is choosing to focus on this as a political issue, despite polling suggesting that reopening schools fully is an unpopular idea? Right. Americans are anxious. Right now, they don't know what the best science is. They don't know what the best preparation is. They don't know how to imagine what school looks like. Is it every other day? Is some of it online? Are their children spaced out? Do they eat their lunch at their desk? All these things are new. And it creates with each and every new idea and concept that is being debated, thought about, in every school district in the country, a lot of uncertainty. And into that uncertainty, the president plunges headlong, don't worry about it, go back to school. Well, that doesn't answer a lot of the questions that parents and teachers have about 